I'm installing the USA spec BT45 HON3 in my 2008 Ridgeline. Thought I would document the process and hopefully it helps some people out. The first step is to uh, lift up the bottom of the rear seat and remove all the trim pieces down here. Uh, I've already done that. The trickiest one is probably the seat belt uh, in the middle, kind of between the seats. I think it's right here. Now that's a two piece. You'll have a hard time with that one. But make sure you get these on the edge as well. And after that, I'm going to start the process of removing. There's three bolts. One right here. That one with the yellow paint. I believe this one right here, which has some purple paint on it. And one more behind the driver's seat. That one with the dab of yellow paint. So I'll remove those. It's a 10 millimeter head on those. So uh, we'll get those removed and then check back. The next step is to remove the rear headrests and remove the plastic caps on the driver and passenger side of kind of the upper trim underneath the rear windshield. That's what it looks like underneath. You'll have to pry those out, but they just pull straight out. Now at this point, you can lower the bottom of the rear seat, and you'll find that this back seat part is now loose. So you can lift it straight up and away from the, uh, the back of the truck and just fold it flat onto the bottom part of the rear seat. It'll take two hands for me to do that, so I'll do that and then check back. So I've laid the top of the rear seat flat onto the bottom of the rear seat. The next step is going to be to cut away this piece. This houses the uh, XM tuner and that's what we're going to need to connect to. One thing I haven't mentioned at this point is if you haven't yet disconnected your battery, it's a good idea to go ahead and do that since we're going to be cutting and uh, connecting to the stereo. Uh, so disconnect the battery. I've also found that it's it works out really nicely just to lay the top of the rear seat uh, down between, or I guess behind the front seats. It gets it out of your way. And now we'll start cutting into this piece. I thought you'd be curious to see where and how to make this cut uh, to access the XM tuner. And uh, what I've done here, and I think you can actually cut less, is you can see I've cut down here, across, and then up. I made an additional cut down here. And I'll show you the blade I'm using. This is a, I believe it's a Stanley curved blade, uh, which wor it's worked really well for this. It keeps you from plunging too deep. Uh, into the back here, and I'll show you why that's important. Uh, there's a few wires back here, and uh, if you go too deep, uh, you do run the risk of cutting some things you shouldn't cut. Um, I've actually already unplugged this part from the XM tuner, which is right here, and there is a button that you need to squeeze on the kind of the bed side of the truck. So you need to reach your fingers around and squeeze uh, on this little button. I'll see if I can get to it here. Right there. Uh, there's a button. So you'll have to squeeze that and pull to disconnect that. Uh, like I said, I think I actually cut too far. I don't know that I will need uh, this cut down here because it looks like uh, I'm going to install the Bluetooth unit right here and connect it here. And I think that should give me plenty of space. So you may actually just need to cut this, uh, the U-shape, right here. And that should be sufficient. So I follow the instructions here. I have an XM tuner. It's important to set these switches the correct way on my unit. Uh, down means on. And so I'm supposed to have one and three on. Uh, so I've already made that. Make sure that you take this step and do this properly. Uh, or else it won't work correctly for you. Alright, so I've now connected the 18-pin units into the Bluetooth module. 
I've connected the male ends or the male connector that was going into the factory XM tuner into the female end of the wiring harness of the Bluetooth module. And now all that's left is that I've got to connect that male end that's not connected to anything uh, from the Bluetooth wiring harness back into the female connector of the XM tuner uh, right there in that upper left corner. So I'm going to do that. So at this point it's all connected and what I'm doing, what I would encourage you to do as well, is to test everything before you put the seat back together. I've got the USB connected to test the charging and that's working. I've got the microphone uh, running to the front of the vehicle where I'm hoping to eventually snake uh, the cable uh, to get to the windshield center area. And I've got the aux jack uh, plugged in here as well into the unit. The worst thing I can say about it, everything seems to be working um, once I've obviously connected my battery again, keyed in the security code, and I uh, got it turned on to the XM1 band. Uh, Preset number four on the XM1 band is Bluetooth. Preset number six is the uh, aux input onto the Bluetooth module. And the worst thing I can say about it is that this feels to me a little loose, The uh, where the cable plugs in here. Um, maybe that'll be okay. I may actually double it back and uh, either Gorilla tape it or strap it in there to maybe uh, double it back on itself and then possibly uh, with a cable tie or something, uh, cable it so that there's less chance of it pulling out. Another quick housekeeping note, this is a great chance, by the way, to take two minutes and get like a damp microfiber cloth and wipe down everything back here behind the seat. Uh, maybe get a uh, handheld vac or a shop vac or something. I uh, found a lot of uh, hair from the previous owner's pet and other random things back here so take just a couple minutes and uh, and do that I'll try to include a link to something that I've used uh, in the description of the video all right one of the main questions I had with this whole installation was how am I going to place the microphone in a way that uh, doesn't just look terrible so what I've done is I took clear gorilla tape and I'll put a link to this in the uh, video description. And I've mounted it just below my headliner. It's actually out of the line of sight when you're sitting in the driver's seat. Uh, hopefully you can see it there. And then I've run the cable. I've tucked it underneath, kind of between the headliner and the windshield, all the way the length of the windshield. And then it runs, uh, let's see, oh, right here. Okay, so I went to this seam and peeled back the uh, the panel here. There's a plastic panel. So I went from here over, and then I caught this uh, kind of the molding, this weather stripping piece, and tucked it in, just kind of peeled it back. This actually peels back from the door just a bit. You can kind of tug it this whole piece slightly. So it runs down here. And then I've popped off uh, this floor or the door trim piece. I've popped off this one. And I've popped off this one. Uh, there's kind of little pieces here that pop up. You also tug at these a good bit. Uh, they don't come off, or at least mine didn't come off very easily. Uh, but when you pop those two off, it loosens uh, this piece just enough that I'll be able to snake that cable, uh, kind of tuck it in between the carpet and the plastic trim there, and that'll get all the way toward the back seat. So this is a view from the back seat, uh, kind of the door area. You can see the mic cable is running uh, underneath. So I've got it snaked all the way through the, to the back and connected. It's working fine. Uh, so now I've got to button this thing back together, and I'm also going to be putting the USB charger and the uh, like an aux input. Uh, I think I'm going to try to thread it through to the middle of the back seat so that those in the uh, rear seats can can use those uh, parts of this module. Uh, so we'll come back with uh, maybe a way to do that. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see how this is. Uh, threaded through or not, but I have female USB and 
uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, jacks uh, here kind of on the underside of the uh, console the idea is if somebody flips down the console in the rear seat uh, they'll be able to charge a device or plug in their phone to play music uh, from the back so I've got it threaded kind of up through here comes out here and then comes into the back of the seat here so here's a look at the module uh, that's actually installed I my original plan was to stick it to the back kind of the back body of the uh, of the cab here with command strips but that did not work at all uh, you might get the extra strength ones these were just too flimsy they wouldn't hold it there uh, so what I did was I uh, took a cable tie and strapped it to this metal brace I was concerned about rattling so uh, literally I grabbed uh, a sock and just kind of put it there uh, so that it wouldn't be plastic rattling against metal uh, hopefully that won't impact I didn't see any uh, exhaust vents or anything that uh, indicated the unit really needed to breathe so uh, we'll see hopefully that doesn't impact uh, the unit long term uh, but you can see some of the the cable sticking out here uh, the 3.5 millimeter cable the USB cable uh, and the antenna uh, that's actually the, or the microphone the USB and the 3.5 millimeters on there at the bottom and then they feed out I've hidden all the cables in here uh, the USB and uh, 3.5 millimeter cables are sticking out here and uh, so anyway I'll leave that there and uh, hopefully it'll kind of button back up the way that it was and uh, I'll work to get the back seat back together I thought I'd mention this I'm a little concerned about these uh, USB and 3.5 millimeter the female cables getting crimped or severed or caught up when I put this seat back uh, flat against the back of the truck so I set them up here so as to hopefully be out of the way uh, just maybe be mindful of that when you set the seat back up I'm trying to figure out exactly how it uh, how it goes back in here so we'll see okay so I lifted the back of the seat uh, back onto these hooks uh, you'll have to kind of do it from the center if you're doing it by yourself it's a little awkward but it's doable uh, she let them rest down in there. The big thing now to check is to make sure that, uh, let's see if we can see these. You gotta make sure that these, uh, where is it? There we are. That these holes line up. So this is the edge of the seat, the middle, right there. And then there's one over there on that end. Uh, so you got to make sure that your holes line up. Uh, those three bolts that hold the seat back uh, to the bottom of the seat. And so I'm gonna those do line up. I'm gonna bolt those in. Put the trim pieces back in. We'll be all done. All right. So the trim pieces are back in. Uh, make sure you pop these plastic retaining caps back on the top where the uh, back of the seat hooks in. And here's the way uh, things work. With mine anyway, I think I mentioned I chose to route these cables so that they're available uh, to people who use them in the back seat. So the 3.5 millimeter uh, female jack and the USB uh, jack as well. So uh, those in the back seat can use those, uh, connect to them, and when they're not in use, uh, they just live back there, kind of out of sight. So. Uh, anyway, that concludes it. Hope this is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments.